moving around. I'm back to a little white mini jig with an indicator rig. Decent little trout. Come here, Busta. Take you off. It's a male. There you go. A little white mini jig. Not much of a trout, but it's better than nothing. Hey, what's up, folks? Gabe Montgomery here, Tenor Somani YouTube channel. And today we're gonna to do something just a little bit different. We're gonna go do some trout fishing. It's winter time and they, most places have like an urban trout fishing program where the Department of Conservation does a little winter trout stocking program. And it's a great opportunity to catch fish when the water's cold and the other fish are not biting because everybody knows that the bass fishing, the crappie fishing, bluegill fishing, all that stuff gets a little bit tougher in the winter time, but the trout seem to have a really good tolerance for cold water so it creates great opportunity way to find out if your city has these is get on the department of conservation website and you can look it up um, most bigger cities will have some kind of winter trout stocking program and you can find those lakes go out and try them and i'm going to get out in the water i got a few hours it's something i kind of like to do if i don't have enough time to hook up the boat and go to the lake if you're new to the channel please subscribe give me a little thumbs up if you appreciate the content so let's go out there. We're going to try to catch some fish. And when I get back, I will let you know on some of the baits that I like to use um, when I'm trying to catch these winter trout. We got overcast conditions out here today. So we're going to start out with this black and yellow 64th ounce marabou jig. This is what I like to start out with on overcast conditions. Got a little football indicator and we got 5X tippet. Let's see if we can get a bite. We're going to try this for a little bit. And then we're going to start stripping a woolly booger of some sort. Still out there and let it settle and I'll just give it a little short twitches. Just watch that indicator. It's really cold out here. It's like 29 degrees. Got a little bit of a wind chill. Just give it a little short twitches. I'll get out there in the wind and you can just kind of let it drift but in this slack water like this, you want to give it a little short twitches and just let it sit for five, six seconds. I like to use a roll cast for the most part because got a lot of stuff behind us in these city parks. So a roll cast keeps you from getting hung up on your back cast. All your lines out in front of you. Just let that thing settle and just make a little short twitch every once in a while. See if we can catch a couple before it gets dark. A little short twitches. Just enough to get their attention. And just let it sit. There you go. Fish on. There you go. Just like that. Nice trout. Just take your time. It's a pretty good fish. Pretty good fish. On that black and blue, or black and chartreuse, black and yellow marabou jig, 64th ounce. So we can get down there and get that guy. Just your typical stock of trout in these parks. There we go. Nice. Thanks. I like to... I can mouth them with these gloves. They got sharp teeth, so that's a little guy. But it is a bite. Got a lot of little teeth in there. You don't want to grab these without gloves on. So we'll throw them back, see if we can get another one. Just give that little indicator, a little twitch here once in a while, and just let it sit. It's starting to snow out here, folks. And it is very cold. And these fish are definitely in areas. They're in little schools, so if you're not getting bit in an area, got to be mobile. Got to move around. Just, just cover little stretches. Just keep covering water and eventually you'll find a little group of them that are willing to bite. Oh, fishy, fishy. 
Whew. Hands are getting numb. I know there's more in this area. I've seen them up here working on top. The thing that's really nice about these trout is they'll bite throughout the whole winter. Um, it's just a matter of finding out how deep they are. You keep adjusting this indicator. Right now I'm fishing about two and a half feet deep because it's overcast. Usually they're up a little bit higher. And you just gotta keep changing that indicator until you start getting bites. I'd say I got it about right now because I've caught several fish pretty quick. Um, but these continue to bite all winter long where your, your bass and your crappie and your bluegill really get slow this time of year, but the trout seem to like this cold water. That's the nice thing about this opportunity that we have with the winter trout stocking program. Start getting ice on my guides. So we got a little bit of wind over here. You can just kind of let it drift. You don't have to twitch it near as much. There he is. Oh yeah, I got a jumper. I got a jumper. Just keep that rod tip up high. They want to get down the rocks on you. Seems like the old black and yellow is working out pretty good today so far. I keep the ice out of my guides. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Healthy fish. This fish have been in here for several months. You know, this starts in early November. It's catch and release until the 1st of February. So most of these fish have been caught by now. Beautiful fish. Let's get him up here and have a look. It's like a male, big old mouth. There we go. Same thing, a little black and chartreuse jig. There we go. Nice fish. Look at the mouth on that thing. Let's throw him back. Most of the time, you just take your rod, put it in the water, and shake it out. You get that ice out of there. And then I just like to tap the rod like this and get that excess water off there. It's usually enough to get you by for a cast or two. You might have to just continually do that throughout the day. It's just part of it. Making a little roll cast out there. And repeat. Just like any other fishing, um, usually the first thing in the morning and right in the evening are your two major bite windows. And then in the middle of the day, you'll have a bite window as well. You know, there's been days where you'll catch 30 you stay out here for three or four or five hours and there's some days when they don't seem to be biting at all usually these overcast cold nasty days high humidity are your better days you know trout are visual feeders just like most game fish and uh, they seem like they can see a little bit better than a lot of your fish so when that sun's really high and it's a bright clear sky it's a little bit tougher to catch them but on these cloudy days are typically a little bit more aggressive this is not a deep pond um, we're fishing right now probably uh, six foot of water maybe got about two and a half foot of line below my indicator so we're fishing about two and a half feet deep you see how that wind is just kind of carrying that float you don't really need to do much you just kind of let it ride these fish are just set up in the current and it'll just drift right to them. And just let it go. Let it drift. I mean, every once in a while you might want to pop it a little bit. There we go. Just like that. Boom. I knew there was more in this area. So 
we got five pound fluorocarbon on here. It's five eggs. Got an eight foot six to nine foot five weight rod. It's just perfect, all around multi-purpose rod. Pretty game fish, even in the cold winter. Oh, this water temp is probably about 37 degrees. Let's get this one up here. Come here, girl. There we go. Another one. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Now, it would be really tough to catch a bass on a day like today, but these trout are pretty gamey. They like this cold water, so it's a good time. And they fight really good, too. Just a rainbow trout, stocker trout. These, like I said, these things have been in here for a couple months. They've been a lot of them have been caught by now, so they're a little bit smarter. When you come out here the first couple of weeks, you can throw just about anything at them, but um, they get a little bit more finicky as the season wears on. That's it. Look at this ice. It's starting to get ice on everything. Guides are starting to freeze up. Got to keep dipping them in the water to keep them clean, but. It's worth it because the fish are biting. It's a good time. It's a great way to get out of the house and spend an hour or two out here and get that out of your system. Okay, we caught a few on the indicator rig. I'll show you the other way I like to catch these fish, and that's just stripping a leech or a woolly booger. We're gonna take this little guy right here. This has got a, it's a pretty interesting little fly. It's basically a woolly booger, but it's got this piece of hackle hanging off of it. And so it's kind of olive with some brown and it's got this kind of chartreuse hackle. It's uh, got the little black stripes on it. So we're going to take our indicator rig, or strike indicator off. Take that off. We're gonna cut our jig off. And then we're just gonna call tie, it's called a new swirl knot. It's a great, simple, easy knot. I can maybe tie it with my gloves on, I don't know, we'll see. Just come through the eye like that. Okay, so you've got the line right here. And you just make a little loop. Put your tag line behind your other line like this. Come around the front of it and go back through this little loop right here. Kind of pinch that. And then just pinch the line off right there. And you're making like a box knot, right? So this is what you're looking at. Just pull that tight. And moisten it. And then take your fly, run it right through this loop. And then you want to grab this little bit of tag right here and pull it up and you just kind of pull down on it moisten it and just slide it down i like to grab this tag again just kind of pull it tight that's called a new swirl knot um learned that from doug swisher it's a good knot caught some big fish on it it's simple doesn't look like much but it works and you're going to trim this little tag off and we're going to throw this thing out and start stripping it and see if we can pick up a bite or two before it gets dark. Pretty straightforward. This just sinks really slow. It's got a little bit of weight in the front. It's going to fall about, I don't know, about a, a foot every three seconds, maybe something like that. All right, that was a lot of fun. I mean, it was cold out there. It was 28 degrees. I had a little bit of wind chill, a lot of ice in my guides. <clears throat> Made casting a little bit difficult and staying out there a little bit difficult. My hands were kind of numb, feet were kind of numb. But we caught some fish, had some fun. Um, it's great to go down there to the park if you've just got a few hours, don't have enough time to actually hook up the boat and go travel to a lake somewhere. I love it. Uh, most of our damage came on the little marabou jig. It's something I kind of start out with a lot of times is an indicator rig, and we'll talk about some of the flies. But indicator rig is just using this little strike indicator. This is a little football indicator. It's got a little slit in it, and it's got this rubber insert right here and you just put your line in the slit 
and you just turn these little this little piece of rubber and it just stays hooked up to your line. The main thing to remember with the indicator rig is you got to figure out how deep the fish are suspended. I typically start out about three foot. If I'm seeing a lot of fish rising on the surface, I'm going to go to about two foot, see what happens. If I'm not seeing a lot of activity, I'll probably, and I'm not getting bites, I'll drop down a little bit deeper. So I usually start out with three foot and I'll go four foot, maybe five foot. Usually that's going to get you some bites somewhere in that range. Um, the water that I'm fishing in is typically, I'm not throwing deeper than probably eight feet at the deepest. Um, try to real visual feeders and you always want that bait to be right above them and they'll, they'll come up. They have no problem coming up two or three feet at all. This is a 64 ounce Marabou jig. Um, these are available just about anywhere. These are just cheap Bass Pro shops. If you got a fly shop around you, go in there and ask for these. Chances are they're gonna carry them. This is a really good bait to start out with. I like this on overcast days and really any time, you know, any conditions you can get some bites on this. But I keep it really, really simple as far as this, um, these stock trout. It's not, this is not super technical like it would be if you're out on a natural stream, say Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, you know, any, any place that's got um, trout that have been introduced years ago and they're kind of native. This is, these are stock trout and they do get a little bit smart. Um, when you first, when they first put them in there, you can catch them on anything. But as time goes by, they've been caught and they get a little bit more finicky, but this, this little black and chartreuse jig is really, really good. And I'll actually pinch a lot of this off and you don't want to cut it off with scissors. You just want to take it and kind of just pinch and pinch and pinch because you want it to look natural. If you just chop that off, see how squared off that is. Um, that doesn't look natural. If you just pinch and pinch and pinch, it gives it more of a natural look. That's how I would thin this down. That's a little bit too long because the try to actually come up and grab that and you won't get a hook in them. So I'm going to downsize that a little bit and that way they can get it all the way in their mouth. <clears throat> this color and brown and white. So 64th ounce is what I typically go with. It's great on a fly rod. And you can throw this on the spinning gear too. Um, same thing, just get you a small float, small bobber, small strike indicator. And you can tie that on there. You'll be able to cast that out. And if you guys are spin gear fishermen, um, little small jerk baits, little rooster tails, little small like wacky rigged worms work really good on these trout, especially when they first put them in there. You can catch them on just about anything you want, little bitty baby rattle traps, little blade baits, little spoons, any of that kind of stuff. But as it goes on, they get a little bit more tough to catch. And this little indicator rig with a little marabou jig is a way to do it. Um, with the indicator rig, another bait that I love to throw is a little mini jig. Um, these are really good fish catchers right here. I typically go with white or pink, and sometimes I'll go with a brown, but this is about a 164. This might be a 180th, so I'm 180th, 164, somewhere in that range. And that's really all I throw on the indicator rig. Usually um, the little marabou jig or that little mini jig is going to get you some bites. Now, when I switch over to stripping, I'm going to be using some kind of woolly boogers. <clears throat> um, the one, I like, the one I usually start out with is, this is about a size 12 beadhead woolly burger in black. Really small, finesse little bait. And it's just got this hackle collar here. You know, it's just a standard woolly burger pretty much. Great bait. And I'll go with this color, um, or I'll go with something that's kind of the olive color. You know, kind of natural. That's usually the two colors or brown. I'll mix in a brown in there, but some form of a black, olive, or brown I usually get you some bites. Another bait that I'll throw stripping as well is a little leech. This is kind of a mohair leech. It's got that really fuzzy material on there. It's a little slimmer profile. It's got the marabou on the back, but this little leech in some sort of brown or olive color will get you some bites. And then one more bait that I'll throw, and I threw this today and I had a fish hooked up and ended up breaking it off. This is a little fly that my buddy Ken Minner tied up. It's just got some like cream colored hackle on it. It's got a little bit of, I think that's peacock there on the back, um, peacock body, and just a beadhead little fly on a little, kind of like a little scud hook. It's probably like a size 16, I'm thinking. But this thing thrown out, you let it sink and you just strip it really, really slow along the bottom. It's actually bumping on the bottom. Those fish that are down there deep, they'll suck it in. Winter trout fishing is a lot of fun. It's a great opportunity. Like I said earlier, get on the website, Department of Conservation, see if you have any opportunities in your area, go out there, keep it simple. Um, as far as if you want to get into fly fishing, 
Um, you don't have to go out and buy a really expensive outfit. There's a lot of places out there that offer fly rod and reels for 100, 125 bucks for the combo. Usually I would, I'd recommend like a, like an eight foot six to nine foot five weight rod and floating line, you know, some kind of high vis floating line. The pond is a great place to learn because you don't have any current to contend with. It's not moving water. You can make a cast and let it sit and you don't have to worry about the current taking your bait down and getting all hung up. Um, best place to learn is actually a farm pond where you don't have any trees behind you at all. Just an open field, flat. You can make your cast. You don't have to worry about getting caught up on your on your back cast. The roll cast is something that I use a lot because the lake that I'm fishing in, there's a walking trail around there. Got to be careful on that back cast because you could hook somebody that's walking behind you. Definitely don't want that to happen. There's pine trees back there and stuff. So that roll cast is nice. It keeps all the line out in front of you. You can still get your bait out there really, really far. There's several videos on that on that look that up if you want and if you just want to go take your spinning rod go out there just a six foot six foot and a half ultralight um four pound test will work great for you you can do the indicator uh rig with a spinning rod it's probably can't do stripping the woolly and stuff but you can actually put that woolly burger on an indicator or on a bobber or a float and catch fish i do that all the time too so that's all i got for you appreciate you checking this out and until next time